Have you heard that the battle belongs to the Lord? If you are going through a battle today, it's not just your battle, He's in the battle with you. And also, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So take hold of His joy today. Elizabeth Rose with Mission Messiah. so that it will be well with us. Does this sound like a God that's, that's mean and ugly and angry? No. Sounds like a loving father, doesn't it? Yes. He wants us to, he's given us these things and he wants us to do these things so that it will go well with us. He wants good for us and that you may increase mightily. He wants us to multiply. He wants us to have children. He wants our children to have children and their children to have children. He wants his, his, what was the first thing he told Adam and Eve to do? Go forth and multiply. 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 As the Lord God of your fathers has promised you in the land that flows with milk and honey. <coughs> So he's just telling us how we are going to be able to take full advantage of this land of promise, this land that flows with milk and honey, when we do his commandments. <laughs> I'm fired up. I'm telling you, we're on a roll. But last week, uh, I was invited to a meeting mm -hmm. for Awake the Nations. Yes. And I tell you what, reintroduce myself to this gentleman right here. <laughs> but the reason I had to reintroduce myself is because I didn't recognize him because the last time I saw him, he was about this tall. <laughs> and now he's a rather large man. But, Not that uh, big. Come on, man. Come on, man. But this is, I want you to meet Jake Sanchez. Uh, Jake, how are you today, buddy? Man, I'm doing great. Yeah. Well, what fired me up is Jake and I ran into each other and reunited at uh, this Awake the Nation meeting for mm -hmm. the persecuted church. Yes, sir. And uh, Jake and I got to talking, and he began to tell me about the ministry that he's engaged in and operating. And Jake, I just thought everybody needed to hear about it. What's the name of that ministry? Merge Now Ministries. Merge Now. Now, where in the world did you get a name like that? That sounds like some kind of traffic sign. Well, or it, it, I mean, it is. It, it, we're, we're ultimately, as far as churches and, and, and denominations go, in my opinion, we're all going in the same direction, you know? Um, but at least what we tried to do is, is, is or what we're trying to do is, um, create spaces and create pockets and create events where we can we can put our denominational difference aside differences aside uh and get out of our lane and merge amen you know where are you merging what's his name we're merging for for jesus christ man <laughs> absolutely he said, I mean, he said if there's he only one up, name you know exactly in, in exactly. fact I'll, I'll just back up and give you a little history jake's family the sanchez family were probably one of the very first families that came to Mission Messiah when hmm. we had the burden and actually took on one of those rundown rooms oh, yeah. and, and yeah. transformed it into a room that a mother and a child could live in. Do you mm -hmm. remember, do you yeah, remember I that? I remember that. I remember that. Exactly. Actually. But the, So let me tell you, the Sanchez family is dear to my heart. <laughs> but, but now, my goodness gracious, you've grown into this full-grown man guy, and now you've got how many kids? Have you? I got four kids. Four kids. Yes, sir. Four kids. And merge ministry, and of course, I, I jump to the mission because that's been our that's been the thing. Jesus Absolutely. Christ. Absolutely. All we Absolutely. lift up at, at Mission Messiah is Jesus Christ. This is the mission or the work of the Messiah. Yeah, absolutely. So 
that's what you're saying about merge. So tell us a little more about merge. I wasn't raised to see, oh, he's Baptist, oh, he's Methodist, oh, he's this or he's that or whatever. Yeah. I was just raised to be like, look, you either love Jesus or you don't. You know what I mean? Amen. And when I was at a worship conference and the guy heading it up did an altar call, long story short, he grabbed me while I was trying to go get prayer. Okay. And he said, God wants you to study about the band of prophets. Woo. And so I was like, the all right. The band of prophets. Yeah, there, there's... If you go into the Old Testament, there is a there is a group that is referred to as the band of prophets. And it literally says what each of them were playing. The lyre, the flute, the harp, the trumpet, serious? the tambourine, except each one is a prophet. OK. And so when I look at worship teams, especially local worship teams, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. uh, we might we might could con compare the worship pastor, you know, mm -hmm to that prophet status, okay. but we wouldn't say the tambourine player or the, or the, even the bass players that we wouldn't hold them, hold them to that same standard. Ah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so my heart was like, look, let's, let's start working with the worship pastors as many as possible and start giving them that same revelation to bring their whole team up to that standard, up to that level of worship, you know, yes. uh, because the, the, yes. what was so amazing about the band of prophets was Anytime people got into their presence, amazing things would happen. <laughs> King Saul got into their That's what presence. We're about. King Saul got into their presence okay. and began to prophesy involuntarily. Yeah. And people were like, is, is he now a prophet? What? Who is this guy? Yeah. Same yeah. thing happened to King David, and the same thing happened to one of Saul's armies. So they had a whole army. If you go back and look, you will okay. find this. A whole army. He sent them in three platoons at a time, and by the time it was they were done, there was a whole army worshiped worshiping and prophesying glory to God. God and if there was ever an hour that we need to see that reintroduced we're living in it we're living in it, and I believe it's forthcoming it I mean like we're we're, we're, on that page. we're beginning to see that already yeah. we're beginning to see ridiculously amazing things by just by bringing these these worship leaders together and we're doing workshops with their whole worship teams Teaching them this concept. We're okay, teaching so them you're, this you're priestly concept. Let, let me make sure I've got this. You're okay. literally taking praise leaders out of various congregations yes. in a community. Correct. And coming together. together. You're merging, merging them all together. Merging them now wow. for a night of worship. Okay. Right? Okay. And so then we come together, we, we give them that, that quick revelation, and we give their worship teams that revelation. You should see the repentance that takes place among wow. drummers, among electric guitar players, among, among, among just God. people who just did it as a gig. You know what I mean? They were just kind of playing with it, just something they enjoyed, but now, now they're realizing their that hearts are being pricked. Grabbing that instrument is like a priestly duty. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, dude. And so when we're all on the same page and we're all trying to be as, as sensitive and, and as humble to the, Spirit. to the Holy Spirit as possible, okay. now you have a team where guess who's the worship leader? The, the, holy, king. the king of kings, the, king the, of king. the Holy Spirit you know is now the worship pastor. You know pastor. what I think of, Jake, as you're talking about this? I, th I think of when they came together to, to, to anoint and, and, um, and, and set things in place in the temple. And mm -hmm. the word says they all came together, all the, all the musicians. Yeah. And everyone came together as one 
Do you remember what happened when they came together as one? In one accord, yeah, in one accord, absolutely. The Shekinah glory uh, of Almighty God you, fell you on that You gotta understand when I was studying this stuff, um, I asked myself. I said, God, this is an Acts two moment in the Old Testament. And he said, <laughs> exactly. he said, imagine if I can move like that, then yeah. how much more? Now, because back then my spirit could rest on you. Now my my spirit can Lives live in you. in you. Exactly. You see how it just clicks and it just makes sense, yeah. you know. It just all bears so, witness. So, man, we've been. I got the chills. We've been seeing. Look, I'll just tell you this one story. There's plenty of stories to go around, but I'm gonna tell you one of my favorites. Okay. Um, one, at, at, this was up in Northern Iowa. We did Emerge Now. The sound guy. He's he he came two weeks after the event. Okay. to the pastor and said, look, I'm not over spiritual. I'm not really into that thing. You know, I love Jesus and everything, but I'm not over spiritual like you guys. He said, but I promise you, I saw a man dressed in white praying for people on the stage and praying for people as they came. He goes, and I know it was Jesus. He goes, I, I can't imagine. He goes, every time I looked at the soundboard, cause I was, I was afraid to, to look at him yeah. and I would look back up and he was there just walking across the stage, praying for the musicians, praying Praise for the worship leaders, God. and then reaching down and praying for people who were coming up to the altar getting mm. prayer. And it was funny because that particular altar call, we had, we had talked about Jesus being the groom waiting at the altar for his bride. <laughs> and he, by the way, <laughs> the word's clear. He is ever interceding. Mm -hmm. He's ever interceding mm -hmm. on our behalf. Mm -hmm. So, man, if that that just lit us up to just continue, just continue, just keep worshiping, uh, just keep. Uh, you know, calling up different worship pastors from all different, I mean, across denominations. It's funny. The main church up in southern Idaho that that spearheads this thing, they're Dutch Reformed Church. Okay. The church that spearheads the one of in northern Iowa mm -hmm. is a uh, Assembly of God Church, okay. you see, and then okay. the church that spearheads the one here in Texas yeah. is a is a full gospel Nigerian church. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, you so just love it. so it's just it, yeah. it, people just are catching the vision and moving with it, you know. Yeah, yeah. And we're excited. Wow, man, there's a lot to be excited about. <laughs> and I tell you what, uh, we're going to talk some more about right, what cool. we believe the Lord's calling us to out here. And it sounds like. We may have an, an emergence. <laughs> I think so. Absolutely. <laughs> Jake, good to see you, man. man good the to Lord see you, Lord bless too. you. Oh, absolutely. Mission Messiah is an 18-month program for women and women with children. Those real-life experiences are what should make truth easily entreated. Our desire is to see women set free from life debilitating substances and events. Our program is solidly based on Jesus Christ and His plan of living. Our emphasis on biblical study, scripture memorization, life skill development, and renewed family living is interconnected to bring wholeness back to hopeless lives. And the sun own spirit. <laughs> wow Warehouse and Zip Business Services developed out of the need for practical job training and discipleship. They are flourishing businesses filled with our graduates and trainees. Is Mission Messiah the answer for someone you know? This has been an interesting week in uh, Midland, Texas, where, where I personally live. And I have a son-in-law who is a policeman. And this week has been a little bit of a sad week. We've had a, an officer that has been shot and killed. And but what I really wanted to talk about, what Dan and I had discussed, is what we have gotten to observe in the city and the way that the city and the state of Texas has absolutely been so full of honor for this young Officer Heidelberg. Uh, it has been amazing because even from New Mexico I was watching as that caravan of policemen and first responders 
took him gently to Tarrant County yes. for his autopsy and then brought him gently back with every single county along the way, providing officers and escort through their through their cities and through their towns and through their counties. It has been so moving and so touching. Absolutely. Wasn't it amazing when you saw Fort Worth and the oh, yeah. miles and miles and miles of police cars? And it, it is truly about honoring this young man's life for being a, you know, being one of the first responders, one of those that goes in when everyone else is running out. And um, he, he was killed in the line of duty. And, and it's hard because Tammy's daughter is married to a police officer. Yes. Um, so there, it brings it very much home how dangerous these lives are. You know, I, I do think, though, and, 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 and the touch of what I believe scripturally is so beautiful here, it's, it talks about that we are to bring honor when honor is due. Yes. And I love that. That's from Romans 13, 7. And I just love that indeed, not only has the city that loves this young man, he's a native son of Midland, Texas. They have stepped up. But not only that, that oh, our the state. that we've watched the state of Texas and just the way that he, he really has been honored, Dana. And I think you know, do we really think about that in our daily lives? Are we taking the time to honor whom honor is due? Are we honoring our children's teachers? Are we exactly. honoring Are we honoring our bosses? Those in authority over us? Absolutely. Those who are taking care of us? Those who stand on the wall? Doctors and nurses? Us? Doctors, nurses? Yeah. But it, it's just, I believe it's just a place for us to one up our appreciation and Absolutely. to literally give honor to whom honor is due in every situation. And I believe, no, I don't believe, I know that as we honor others, we are honoring God Absolutely. and there's no greater thing that we can do. Before he went to Toronto, unbeknownst to me, uh, John or not, had uh, called him and said, I want you to come and speak at our church. I heard what happened in the regional right. uh, meeting that the people you prayed for, the power of God, fell in a mighty way. And he said, I want you to come to our church and do the same thing. Randy felt a lot of pressure and felt that right. that was a sovereign move of God and he had never gone and preached at another church ever before. Mm. He had never been invited out of his own church. Mm. So he was apprehensive. And during that week before he went to Toronto, this was in uh, January the 20th, 1994 is when it started. Mm -hmm. uh, that Wednesday, God spoke to me. He said, I want you to call Randy. I hadn't talked to Randy probably in six months. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, yeah, I ought to call him. I didn't call him. The next day, which was Thursday, I felt God spoke to me again, said, you need to call Randy. And I thought, okay. And then Friday, it came to me again, you ought to call Randy. You know how you get these impressions oh, about a friend, I ought absolutely. to talk to him, I haven't talked absolutely. to him in a long time. So I called him. And uh, first I talked to Deanne, it was I never had a prophecy for her, and I didn't know I was having a prophecy, but mm -hmm. I had something. And uh, what I remember, the part of it was at the end was you're going to have to let Randy go. Mm. And I didn't know what that meant because mm -hmm. he never went anywhere. Mm -hmm. And she said, you really need to call Randy and talk to him. I said, no, Deanne, I think I only needed to talk to you. Mm -hmm. I, I said, I feel really good about you know, just talking to you. And she said, no, you call back and talk to Randy. And I said, okay. And I called back about 5 or 5.30. And this was on a Friday before he went to Toronto on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And when he got on the phone, I didn't realize what was happening, but the power of God hit me. Mm -hmm. And I was marching around my living room mm -hmm. with a portable phone. phone. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and I told him, I said, Randy, if you can speak it, God has the power to back it up. 
Amen. I said, if the, if the words can wow. come out of your mouth, mm. you will see before your eyes what you have dreamed of, God what you Lee. have wanted. Praise Literally, God. you're going to see with your Christ. eyes everything you've dreamed Ooh. of. Yes. And I said, it's like a man riding on a hobby horse and you reach out to get the ring and you fall off of the hobby horse and you don't get the ring, you're going to come back and you'll get that ring, but don't give up. Amen. And I said, if you can speak it, God will God do it. Will do it. And, he said, and he said, what scriptures do you have? And I said, God showed me specifically, test me, Amen. test me, test me with your Amen. words, Praise test me, God. test me. Praise God, brother. I just pray you're listening. God's not afraid. No. God is big. And the second part of it was what I got the scripture was Gehazi and Elisha, when they were surrounded by the yes. army and fixing to be yes. Yes. captured. City of Dothan. And he, and Elisha said to Gehazi, he said, there's more with us than there are with them. Right. And Gehazi looked around and he said, we don't even have a sword. Yeah. And he said, he said, you know, this doesn't look good. <laughs> and that's what I said to Randy, that for your eyes to be open Amen. to the resources and the Amen. heavens that are coming around you. Amen. And as we comprehend what's yes. above us yes. and what God wants to send down to earth, Amen. it literally will cover the earth. Yes. And, and sure enough, as that servant's eyes were opened, he saw the chariots of fire that encircled the enemy's encirclement. Amen. And my wife didn't say anything. And the next morning she said, how do you know that was from God, what you got? And I said, well, I felt good about it. Why? She said, if that was not right, that what you got from God, you would destroy Randy. Because you told him that he can't fail if he speaks it. And she said, that's how you run your business. You think you can't fail, but you know you can. And so all of a sudden I got worried. Whoa. So I went to a back room that night, that was Saturday night. Mm. And that was the night that they were starting Toronto. And I prayed, I said, God, I don't mind doing this, but I said, I need some backup if I'm doing it correctly or if I'm doing it out of my own self desires, yeah. And uh, I went to sleep. Y'all, what I want you to hear right here is a sincere heart unto the Father desiring to absolutely be in the will of God. And, and this, but God honors that. Yeah. And so I went to sleep. And at four o'clock I woke up. God said, get up and write. So I got up. And he said, I want you to know, Randy's going to be on the cover of magazines. He's going to be on TV. He's going to be one of four men recognized around the world. And he said, but as David had his mighty men, the three and the 30, yes. Randy needs people to help him because this is not for him to do alone. And he needs people that, as Moses had people to hold Moses, his arms Aaron up, and her. he needs people to hold his arms up. Amen. And, um, and he said, and God spoke to me sovereignly and said, I want you to write this out and I want you to mail it before you go to church, okay. before you hear anything from Toronto. And I said, well, I'm going to look like a big fool if this is wrong. <laughs> and so... God will kind of put us out there sometimes. Yeah, so I went and mailed the letter that morning at 8, eight o'clock. Then all of a sudden I got worried about Toronto, wondering what's <laughs> happening in Toronto, you know? And Randy didn't call me till Wednesday. Wednesday he called me and he said, you gotta come up here. He said, you won't believe it. He said, people are standing out in the snow, 25 below zero to get into the building to see the power of God is falling on everyone. People in motorcycle boots up to their, over their knees and spiked hair and green hair. He said, you gotta get up here. 
and I got up there in February to see it. And the first thing that happened the first night, one of the men was leading worship by himself and he had a real expensive guitar. And he got up there on the stage and he started to hit the strings. And when he did, he said, Lord, not now, not now. And he went face first onto the <laughs> platform. I don't know if he crushed yeah. his guitar. guitar or not, but that was my introduction wow. to uh, Toronto. And I thought interesting, something happened while I was there. God literally uh, took over my body and I had a prophecy for Randy that this was to go around the world and that uh, the fuel of this train was to be the Holy Spirit wow. and that we as people were to help him and God gave me specific instructions yes. about how to help him to do what, it, what God wanted to accomplish. And he said that this is literally to go totally around the world. Amen. And so it was, it's been a privilege and an honor and I've been able to travel with him. And um, it's one of the greatest privileges I've ever had as an individual. And Thank I've had know. success in business, et cetera, but the greatest success I've had is following the Holy Spirit. Amen. The most meaningful. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. That man has just summed it up. If you want to find abundant life, you surrender, you die to yourself, you die to your own thinking, and you ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And then, you know, wow, we get to watch what our Almighty God yeah. will do. It's a privilege. Mission Messiah is an 18-month program for women and women with children. Those real-life experiences are what should make truth easily entreated. Our desire is to see women set free from life debilitating substances and events. Our program is solidly based on Jesus Christ and His plan of living. Our emphasis on biblical study, scripture memorization, life skill development, and renewed family living is interconnected to bring wholeness back to hopeless lives. And the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wow Warehouse and Zip Business Services developed out of the need for practical job training and discipleship. They are flourishing businesses filled with our graduates and trainees. Is Mission Messiah the answer for someone you know?